Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Our program today involves rebels, robbers, and the most infamous raid in Vermont history. We start in October of 1864. Our nation was immersed in the Civil War. Vermont soldiers were fighting in the South thousands of miles from home. And then came the northernmost land action of the war, the St. Albans Raid, 155 years ago this week. The raid is a factual, important piece of Vermont history. It's also a fabulous story that has fascinated Vermonters for generations. To learn all about it, here's historian Howard Coffin. In the fall of 1864, the Civil War was going badly for the Confederacy. Atlanta had fallen to William Tecumseh Sherman. An army under Philip Sheridan was conquering the Shenandoah Valley. The Confederates were discouraged, but they were also angry. And they developed a strategy to try to bring the war into the northern states. A northern strategy included would be a raid on New York, actions on, along the Great Lakes, and a young Confederate cavalryman from Kentucky named Bennett Young had an idea for a raid on St. Albans, Vermont to rob the three banks there. He took that plan all the way to the Confederate capital at Richmond. And there he met with high Confederate officials, probably including Jefferson Davis, and they liked the idea and gave him money to fund it. And he went back to Montreal to get ready. Most of the raiders arrived by train here at the St. Albans Railroad Station. The first to get here was Young himself, arriving on the 10th of October. Tom Collins, a young Irishman who was rather outspoken, had remarked on the train to one of the conductors that he was coming to St. Albans to burn the town. The conductor just laughed. They concealed those southern accents well. St. Albans' handsome railroad station was built just after the Civil War on the site of the Civil War era station. When some of the Confederates arrived here, they walked across Lake Street and took rooms at the St. Albans House, this building that still stands. Tom Collins, the outspoken one, walked in this door. And when he got to the desk, he told the clerk his name, Jefferson Davis from Richmond. The clerk laughed. Bennett Young took a room at the Tremont House, which stood where St. Albans' City Hall now stands. He had spent a good deal of time riding around the roads of Franklin County, scouting, of course, an escape route. But he passed himself off as a theology student, always had a Bible with him. They saw, local people saw him reading the Bible as he rode. He read it in the lobby of the Tremont House and in the America House. The locals were so convinced that some ladies asked him to give a sermon in one of the local churches. We're not sure whether he ever did that. Young set the date of the raid for October 18th. And that day, all his men gathered in his room here at the hotel. But he had to tell him the thing was off because it was market day in St. Albans and the streets were crowded. He moved the raid ahead one day to October 19th. Bennett Young, in full Confederate uniform, planted himself in the middle of Main Street and announced, I take possession of this town in the name of the Confederate States of America. A man riding by on a wagon looked at him and smiled. Nobody could believe what was happening in St. Albans. 
St. Albans had three banks in 1864 all along Main Street. They entered them all at the same time. This was the Franklin County Bank, and remarkably, there's still a bank here today. The Confederates went in with guns drawn. Confederate William Hutchinson led the party that came into the Franklin Bank, and he did the talking. Hutchinson went up to the counter, put his pistol in the face of Marcus Beardsley, the teller, and said, we are Confederate soldiers. Come to burn your town. Give us all your greenbacks. Beardsley was incredulous, but he began to turn over the money, as did another teller. And finally, the Confederates said, do you have any gold back there? And the lie was told, no, we don't. They herded the employees together and marched them back to the safe. This will be murder, said one of the tellers, because the Confederates had said they were going to burn the town. They were going to roast in the vault. But the Confederates were heartless, and the door slammed. 20 minutes later, they would be released. In the other banks, the Confederates approaching the tellers said things like, we have come to avenge for what Sheridan is doing in the Shenandoah Valley. You're burning the Shenandoah Valley. You took money from my family in Alabama. They were talking about revenge as they went about their business, talking about not only robbing some money, but the vengeance of that Confederate Northern strategy. As the raid proceeded, the Confederates herded the locals into Taylor Park at gunpoint where they could be kept under watch. But some of them were sneaking away and heading home to get guns. Bennett Young was particularly concerned about all the men, the hundreds of them, that worked in the railroad yards just down Lake Street. So he posted a guard right here at the corner of Lake and Main to make sure those boys didn't come up here, and they didn't. Whether they didn't hear the raid, we don't know. Meanwhile, as the Confederates were robbing the banks and coming out of the banks, fisticuffs, fights broke out on the streets. Bennett, Bennett Young actually fired a shot at one man who refused to go to Taylor Park. The shot hit him in the back, glanced off a rib, and bounced right out, and he was fine. Also, the Confederates are throwing their Greek fire grenades at the buildings along Main Street. This is serious business. They want to set St. Albans afire. They want a conflagration. But it's a wet day, and the things don't work very well anyway. But within 20 minutes of the start of this raid, as it's winding up, shots are being fired at the Confederates. The Confederates are firing some shots. Young goes down to Bedard's livery stable, steals some horses, goes back to get some tack. And the owner of the stable has had it with him and fires three times at Young, and all the bullets are duds, or he would have been dead. So we have, as the raiders are preparing to leave town, a real Civil War battle in St. Albans, Vermont. Bennett Young spotted a man with a military bearing, and he approached him and said, are you a soldier? And the man said, yes, I am. He was Captain George Conger of the Vermont Cavalry, apparently home on leave. And Young told one of his men to take him over into Taylor Park and keep him under guard. But as they took Conger into the park, he broke away and ran here to the America House and in the front door. Captain Conger cuts through the hotel lobby, down the stairs and out the side door onto Lake Street. As he comes out, he's hollering to everyone that he can see, it's a raid, bring out your guns and start fighting. Under fire now, as Bennett Young sees all the parties emerge from the banks, 
he hollers to them, are we well met now? And the reply back is yes. They now have stolen horses for everyone, and the Confederates mount up with 208,000 Yankee dollars in their bags and saddlebags, and they begin to gallop north along Main Street, still under fire. One of the Confederates is hit in the back, seriously wounded, but his comrades come along and keep him upright, and they gallop on out of town. Captain Conger now goes into action, and within minutes he has rounded up a posse of 50 men, armed with everything from old muskets to pitchforks. And within, certainly within a half an hour of the Raiders' departure, and probably sooner than that, Conger is riding north, leading a posse in pursuit, intent on catching up before they reach the international border. The people of St. Albans stood along Main Street in the smoke and confusion with the echoes of the rebel yell which the Confederates shouted as they rode off north, still in their ears. Well, this story isn't over. Tomorrow we'll have the second part of our historical look at the St. Albans Raid. Howard will follow the Raiders as they race across Franklin County with the posse fast on their heels. In the meantime, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.